So what's up guys, uh, last night, it's Sunday night, with my citizen, this is my last night with this watch, it actually sold on Friday. I did my review on Thursday, I listed it Friday morning, and by the time I was going home, it was sold to a guy in London, so it's going right back across the Atlantic to Europe, and uh, by the time it sold, it had about five or six people watching or had it saved to maybe perhaps buy it, so it had a lot of interest on eBay, and it sold really quick, a lot quicker than I thought. So this is my last night with this watch, and... Uh, Sad to see it go, but um, I knew I wasn't going to wear it. It's just too big compared to what I'm wearing now. I'm wearing, this is my 39 milliliter Casio Panda Face, and this is my 38 milliliter Omega Speedy that I daily now, but because I'm so used to these smaller diameter watches, just wearing a 44 Monster like that, it's just... It just seems awkward now. It's weird. It was weird going to a small watch, but going back to a big watch for a daily watch or anything like that, it's just awkward. So anyway, that's not what this video is about. I've always wanted to do a video on the Mecha Quartz revolution that's happening right now. If you have Instagram or Facebook and you Google watches or anything watches in the last maybe year, you've gotten ads on your Instagram or your Facebook for this these new watches that are Kickstarter brands or startup brands that are trying to push these watches they're basically basically mecha quartz watches which is basically a watch that has um two components a chronograph that is mechanically operated and a watch where timekeeping function is powered by a battery you have the best of both worlds um you have the best of a quartz uh watch where it's going to be reliable until a battery dies but it, it mostly quartz watches are more reliable more precise than automatic watches um, and you have the beauty of a sweeping chronograph second hand. Uh, so you have the best of both worlds uh, are 50-50 kind of. You don't have 100% automatic, you don't have 100% quartz, but you have a bit of each. Now these watches tend to retail for about four to five hundred dollars, <laughs> and I think they're very expensive. Well, it is considering the landscape of these startup companies. They tend to, I think, tailor a lot of these watches. So you pay first, and then they. Uh, they create the watch or they make the watch after you pay using the money you used to pay, whatever, to make the watch and ship them. I'm not sure how these companies run, but it's run something similar like that where the money comes in first and then the watch is um, sourced or made for you. So anyway, we have three watches in front of me that sort of represents the different ranges of a full quartz watch with my Casio edifice here. So it's a fully quartz watch in the uh, timekeeping as well as the chronograph. And we have a fully, uh, I'm sorry, we have a quartz watch here in my Citizen EcoDrive, which is solar-powered quartz, but the chronograph is a mechanically actuated chronograph. So it's actu actuated on a spring or something that's sim similar to an automatic watch. So we have a fully automatic watch in my Omega Speedy where it's a fully automatic movement for the timekeeping as well as the uh, chronograph function. And this is a 12-hour chronograph, my Speedy. My Citizen is a 12-hour chronograph, and my Quartz is a 60-minute chronograph. So you have, I guess, more feature in the automatic functioning watches than the Quartz watch in terms of the chronograph. And chronograph is not something that people use every day, but uh, maybe one or two people might use it like um, in different professions like uh, medical and sports or whatever, or even teaching. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to go over the pushers. I'm going to actuate... I'm going to start the chronographs and then pause the video and come back because the way the chronographs sort of stop is just as important as the way they start. So I'm going to start with, uh, which one do I start with, guys? I start with my Citizen Panda because I'm going to really miss this watch when it goes. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to just start the clicker there. I'm going to bring it closer so you guys can hear because uh, the sound it makes is just as important as the function. So here you see the timekeeping second hand is in the six o'clock subdial, and that's a ticking second hand there, as you see right there. And the minute keeping is over there in a three o'clock subdial, and the 12 hour or the hours is the nine o'clock subdial for the chronograph. So let's click it, and you'll hear it snap. Now it's midnight, so a lot of my watches may be shifting over to the new date. So I do my video super late. So let's click it, and here. So it's a nice snap, and that's the beauty of a mechanically actuated chronograph or uh, automatic chronograph. They have a nice snappy, um, have good snappy buttons. And it snapped to stop it. And you can start it again with a one pusher. Now, a flyback chronograph is a little different. A flyback chronograph would snap 
stop and it start reset to zero and then start again over this is not a flyback chronograph it's more of a flip back chronograph which i'll demonstrate in a minute so let's just have this guy run so you hear the pushers you know it's nice and clicky and let's put this to rest and let's go right into the next one which is my fully quartz operated panda and this watch has been getting a lot of wear for me because it's the size and the ease of wear. So let's click the chronograph. Chronograph is not the best. So you hear how a quartz chronograph sound. It's very spongy here. So let's get that started. Focus so you guys can see. And you, you're not even going to hear anything. But you see it at a 6 o'clock sub dial. That's where the chronograph second hand is. So it just ticks. So the chronograph timekeeping here is a ticker. So it'll just be ticking away. And you see the main second timekeeping hand is the, the main is the main hand there that ticks as well. So the two ticking hands in the chronograph and the timekeeping function. So let's put that to the side. And now you have the fully automatic, my automatic speedy. And you hear the pusher, it'll do the same thing again where it has a nice clicky sound. And let's focus it again. So, and the... Yeah, these anti-glare watches are... So I'm going to click it and you hear. So it has a nice snap function there. So we can let these watches run and then come right back to them. Because uh, I'm going to stop them and the way they stop... I oh, you see that my... I'm sorry, my Omega Speedy is a sweeping second hand. Similar to the Citizen hand, exactly the same. There is sweeping. I believe the automatic, fully automatic watch is a bit more precise. They just sweep all the way around, whereas this is, I think it's a one-fifth kind of a, a um, movement around that second hand. So and these are important to professionals. So let's, just, let's pause and come back. So I'm going to have it go for about five minutes and then come back to the video. So what's up, guys? We'll come back. And it's been about five minutes on these watches. So I am going to start with, I'm um, going to just reverse it. So I'm going to go right to my panda dial. My, I'm sorry, my uh, Mega Speedy. It's really tired, guys. It's midnight. And um, let's just stop it and see what happens. So. And then we reset it with the uh, button down here. Now, you'll see it just flip right back to zero. Now, the minute keeping is up there. So, everything will flip right back to zero, which is kind of cool. Really quick. There. And let's go to my citizen and we'll stop it same way. And to reset it, we hit that and that resets very smoothly, very quickly. And that's the beauty of a mechanical actuated chronograph. It just resets right away. So if you want to take another read in, you can, it's just instant. So, and let's try the quartz chronograph, which is going to be very depressing. And let's stop it. Not even a click. So it doesn't even click. It's just very spongy. And let's reset it. And watch what happens with a quartz chronograph. So it goes all the way back to zero. Very slowly. And if you watch the sub dial over here at 9 o'clock, it's going back the minutes. It, it also rolls back the minutes. So it's just winding back. And that's the difference between your regular quartz chronograph, a mechanically actuated chronograph, a mecha quartz watch, and a fully automatic watch with a chronograph function, a chronograph complication. So that's the three, the main differences. And I had, to, I needed these three watches to show you guys what a mecha quartz is. You'll see a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, sort of showing a mecha quartz next to a regular quartz for the chronograph are these two uh, automatic next to a mecha quartz but you need to see the three i think side by side to really get the idea of what you're paying for now you can get a fully automatic watch for about 15 to two thousand dollars in the starting range these mecha quartz are about 500 three to five hundred dollars i've seen on my instagram my facebook adverts or you can just get a silly pa uh silly um quartz watch for as cheap as like, I don't know, $30 with a chronograph function. So you guys will see, you see what the differences are and what you get for the price. So that's it guys. This is my mecha quartz versus the automatic versus the quartz watch.